All right, it's time to talk about people with penises and testicles. So this is more inclusive language, and this is how I'm going to focus. All right, what is the function of the reproductive system in this case? Well, to produce gametes, sperm, to produce hormones, and to ejaculate sperm. For the first six weeks, the reproductive structures in all embryos look the same. Okay, couldn't tell. Okay, on average, around six to eight weeks, major changes occur in the embryo. And those changes are primarily due to one gene, the SRY gene. When the SRY gene is activated at that time frame, six to eight weeks, certain genes are turned on. And then the fetus will develop testes in absence of the SRY gene ovaries. Okay, so what is the SRY gene? Well, it's typically on the Y chromosome. And because of crossing over, it's not always. Sometimes it ends up on the X chromosome. Sometimes you end up with a Y chromosome without it. So this fact contributes to the inability to so quickly define sex as XX and XY. Because when the SRY gene is present, this happens. Now, it doesn't matter if that SRY gene was on a Y chromosome or an X chromosome. That's irrelevant. This is going to happen in presence of the SRY gene. So what happens is um, certain ducts that would be responsible for developing fallopian tubes and ovaries are going to degrade, and the ducts that are responsible for the vas deferens and the testes are going um, to continue developing. And then the external genitalia develops into um, a penis and a scrotum. Okay, so here you can see before six weeks, every embryo is going to look in terms of reproductive system the same. And then uh, whether the SRY gene is turned on or the SRY gene is not turned on, um, differentiation is going to happen. But you can see these are analogous structures, okay? So um, what becomes uh, the penis in people with testicles and who have the SRY gene um, would be the clitoris in people who have um, a vagina and who do not have the SRY gene. Okay. The reproductive organs for people with testicles are primarily located outside the pelvic cavity. Okay, let's talk about the penis first. The penis is a tubular organ that releases both semen and urine. Uh, it has a few parts and I'm just gonna talk about some of them. We have the shaft that is composed primarily of erectile tissue. We have the glands that surrounds the urethra. And we have the prepuce or the foreskin um, and that covers the glands. Something that's important to note is not all penises look the same. Circumcision is one way that not all penises look the same. This is a surgery often done on newborns, but it can be done at any age. And what happens is the foreskin is removed, okay? If the foreskin is not removed, so um, a person with a penis is not circumcised, um, around age five, the foreskin is able to be retracted um, and the foreskin would be retracted both, um, when cleaning, when bathing, when washing, okay? Other than that, there's very limited additional care uh, for a, an uncircumcised penis. And worldwide, it's about 30% of penises that are circumcised. Um, there is a, um, a link here, um, you can see which will show you the circumcision rates by country. So if you're interested, check out this link. All right, what about the scrotum? The scrotum is a fleshy pouch for the testicles. It contains smooth muscle. It has the cremaster muscle. That's what's responsible for elevating the testicles. Uh, Raffi, the visible ridge, um, it actually goes um, under the underside of the penis as well. So here is that ridge, that raffi, that ridge in the center of the scrotum. 
testes or testis for one or testicles or testicle. Oh, it has the shape of a flattened egg, so uh, it has about 10 to 15 grams mass for each testicle. About for so its dimensions, five centimeters long, three centimeters wide, and about 2.5 centimeters thick. Uh, its job primarily to produce sperm and to produce hormones. Okay, the ideal sperm production temperature is roughly one to five degrees below normal body temperature, which is why the testes on the outside of the body. And if the testicles get too cold, muscles pull the testicles up closer to the body. If they are too warm, um, those muscles are going to relax and the scrotum is going to hang a little lower away from the body um, to keep the sperm the most viable. Now, remember how at around six weeks, there's big changes because of SRY gene? Well, prior to that, embryos looked the same. So everything was being prepared to be internal. So what has to happen is the testicles are going to have to descend into the scrotum. And this usually happens by around six to nine months of age, um, but medical professionals are going to check that when a child with a penis it comes in for visits uh, to make sure that the testicles have in fact descended into the scrotum. All right, we have the prostate gland. It's a small muscular organ capable of secreting its um, substances. It surrounds the urethra um, as it leaves the bladder. It produces 20 to 30, mostly around 30% of the fluid that's in semen. It's slightly acidic, um, but it also does contain an antibiotic that may help to prevent UTIs or urinary tract infections in people with penises. All right, we have the epididymis. So this is seven meters of coiled tubes. So it is just highly coiled and wound. And this is where sperm are going to mature here. It takes about two weeks for that process. Um, sperm are stored here, they're recycled here. Sperm are not mobile here. This is going to happen later when they're exposed to fluids uh, later in the reproductive tract. Okay, so they're not mobile here. Uh, we have the vas deferens, sometimes called the ductus deferens. Um, it's a long tube. It connects the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. So let's follow it. So the vas deferens is here from the epididymis all the way over here to the ejaculatory duct. So it's a long tube. The immobile sperm can also be stored in the vas deferens for a few months, okay? Also, this is the tube that is cut for a vasectomy, okay? And then banded or coiled or tied, um, that is the tube. That's why it's called a vasectomy. Okay, we have the seminal vesicle. Um, it is going to contribute most of the volume of semen, so about 60%. And it sits behind the bladder. What is in that fluid it produces? Fructose for energy. Um, because a sperm don't have any energy stored on their own. They need to absorb that. Um, the nutrients from their environment has prostaglandins. That's going to stimulate muscle contractions in the reproductive tract before the sperm are released and then after as well. It's also slightly alkaline, um, which is a survival technique because the um, vaginal canal is very acidic, which would be detrimental to sperm. Sperm become mobile in these secretions. So remember how I said in that vas deferens, they're not mobile. In the epididymis, they're not mobile. Here, with exposure to these fluids, this is where sperm become mobile. The ejaculatory ducts. So the vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle meet here. So fluid, sperm. Um, it empties semen into the urethra with additional fluid from the prostate gland. So take the seminal fluid, take the sperm, 
take the fluid from the prostate gland. There's a couple other glands around there. And voila, you have semen. Uh, we have the bladder, which stores urine. We have the urethra, which is a passageway for both semen and urine to leave the body. Now, this is also a long tube. So here's our urethra leaving the bladder, and it goes all the way here and comes out the tip of the penis. Uh, I did not trace that very well, but hopefully you can see that pathway. Okay, the anus. Uh, is a passageway for fecal matter out of the body. Uh, anal sex involves penetration of the anus. And if we're talking safe sex, condom should still be used in this case. Uh, what happens when a person with a penis is sexually aroused? Well, the parasympathetic nervous system. So remember what we talked about? Sympathetic nervous system is responsible for fight or flight. And if your body is consistently in fight or flight, you're not going to be able to perform sexually, have erections. Well, here's why. The parasympathetic nervous system dilates the arteries. Blood flow to the erectile tissues of the penis increases and the penis becomes erect. So without the ability to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, there's not going to be an, an erection. Okay, let's look at semen or ejaculate. It is two to five milliliters, uh, and five milliliters is a teaspoon. So it's equal to or less than a teaspoon. What does it contain? Well, per milliliter, it has 20 to 100 million sperm. So in a five milliliter sample of semen, it has potentially 500 million sperm. It contains seminal fluid, prostate fluid, some other fluids. Okay. Also some enzymes, which we'll talk about later what they're for. And then we have the process of ejaculation. So there are powerful rhythmic contractions. Um, it's associated with intensely pleasurable sensations, which is orgasm. It also results in an increase in heart rate and blood pressure at the time. Okay, so where are sperm produced? Remember, they are produced in the testicles. So they're produced in the seminiferous tubules within the testicles, okay? And then sperm are stored in the epididymis for like two weeks, then they travel up the vas deferens. And then um, at the ejaculatory duct, okay, um, they would combine with fluid from the seminal vesicle and from the prostate uh, to produce semen. All right, so we can see that journey here. Sperm are produced in the testes, are going to mature in the epididymis sitting on top of the testes, and are going to go up the vas deferens, okay? At the ejaculatory duct, they're going to get fluid from the prostate, from the seminal vesicle. There are other glands, like right here is the Cowper gland, a few others. And through the ejaculatory duct, going to enter the urethra, and then follow the path of the urethra and out the tip of the penis. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the viability of sperm. So how easy is it for them to survive? Well, sperm are viable until semen is dry. So how long is that? Well, inside the person with testicles, that's, you know, more than two months potentially as they're produced in the testicles and the epididymis and the best deferens. But mature sperm are there for around three to five days inside the urethra, four to five hours. Okay. Now, once sperm are inside the vagina, the uterus, the fallopian tube, they can survive for up to five days on skin, about half an hour to an hour. On fabric, a few minutes is going to dry faster. On hard surfaces, well, it kind of depends what temperature the surface is, but it could be a few minutes to hours. Uh, a colder surface, it's going to take longer for it to dry. Water though, so washing your hands, rinsing it off, whatever, that's going to destroy the sperm. Now, because reproduction is the goal, as far as evolution is concerned. There are some unique features in this reproductive system. So let's just review. We have the testicle or testes, that's where sperm is produced. 
we have the epididymis, right, where sperm matures. We have the vas deferens. Okay, we have the prostate gland. Behind the bladder, we have the seminal vesicle. Okay, and then coming out of the bladder, in between uh, the prostate gland, we have the urethra. And then the penis would be right here. The testicles would be inside the scrotum. All right, but let's talk about some unique features that really are there because of reproduction. So the tip of the head or the acrosomal cap has enzymes that are needed for fertilization. The middle piece has mitochondria to provide energy for the tail, and the tail allows the sperm to move. So that's how sperm play a role. But not only sperm, semen. Well, what do I mean? Semen has a lot of things that the goal is to help fertilization. So there's fructose providing energy for the sperm. There's prostaglandins, which will cause muscle contractions inside the reproductive tract of someone with a penis, but also inside the reproductive tract of someone with a vagina. It's alkaline. That's to balance out the acidity inside the vagina. It has enzymes. The enzymes will dissolve some secretions in the vagina, have some antibiotic properties. Um, it will cause semen to clot in the vagina, and then later enzymes cause that clot to liquefy. All right, just a few more thoughts about the reproductive system. Wet dreams. What is a wet dream? Well, it's when a person with a penis would ejaculate during sleep. It's healthy, it's normal, it occurs during REM sleep, okay? It occurs in people with testicles, also in people with ovaries. It occurs throughout life, beginning in puberty. It's just normal. Erections. Erections occur due to romantic or sexual thoughts, often due to physical contact, so that means touching the penis or the inner thigh. But during puberty, erections simply happen like out of the blue, like randomly, okay? Sometimes trying to think about something that is not sexually arousing can help to mitigate and lessen that erection. All right, and then there are morning erections. So the penis becomes erect and engorged with blood during REM sleep. The parasympathetic nervous system is activated, right? Learned about, that's why an erection happens. So the body is like, you know, testing, like testing, testing, this thing on, okay? Normal, healthy. So if this happens, it's just because your body was testing out the process. Everything working okay? That's it. And that's a lot about people with penises and testicles. I hope you learned something new today.